coming up, the Cavs blow out the heat and the Warriors finally win a game on the road. This is Locked On Game to Game NBA. Every game, every team, every angle. Locked On Game to Game, your team every day. Welcome in. You are listening to Locked On Game to Game NBA. I am your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you so much for making Locked On your first listen every single weekday. Make sure you subscribe to Locked On NBA on YouTube and wherever else you get your podcasts from. We have all our Locked On hosts here. They are ready to recap the NBA action from yesterday. We're going to start out with the Brooklyn Nets, who got one of their stars back in the court last night while the Grizzlies played without their best. Locked On Nets goes over the resulting Brooklyn win, while Locked On Grizzlies was still happy with what they saw from the rest of the roster in the loss. Doug Norrie locked on Nets coming at you following a 127-115 win by the Nets over the Memphis Grizzlies. Kyrie Irving is back for Brooklyn after an eight-game suspension. Didn't really need him. That's because Ben Simmons looking ever more confident in the Brooklyn uniform. 22 points, eight rebounds, five assists, 11 for 13 from the field. Nets get seven guys into double digits with scoring a full team effort. We are going to be breaking down Kyrie's return, what Simmons looked like, Kevin Durant just doing Kevin Durant things all over there on Brooklyn uh, Locked On Nets. The Memphis Grizzlies lost a basketball game on Sunday night to the Brooklyn Nets, but I don't really care about that. I care about the way that they lost the game and what it means for the Memphis Grizzlies long term. I'm Joe Mullinax of Locked On Grizzlies, and John Morant didn't play in this game for the Memphis Grizzlies, a loss to the Brooklyn Nets. Desmond Bain didn't play. Jaron Jackson Jr. didn't play. The three best players for the Memphis Grizzlies were not on the floor against Kevin Durant, a returning Kyrie Irving, and a Brooklyn Nets team that was more than able to close this game in the fourth quarter the way that they should have. But the leadership of Dylan Brooks, the high level of play from John Conchar, guys stepping up to make this game far more competitive than it ever should have been. Yes, Brooklyn won decisively, and they deserve credit for that. Kudos to them. Big win. It's one of 82, and more than the L in the column, I am impressed with how the Grizzlies carried themselves and competed in these circumstances. The Cleveland Cavaliers made a statement on Sunday by embarrassing the Miami Heat, continuing a hot start for the Cavs and early struggles for Miami. Our Locked On hosts with both teams go into what's gotten into both sidelines, good and bad. Hey guys, Evan Dammer here, co-host of Locked On Cavs with a Locked On Now takeaway after the Cleveland Cavaliers' emphatic win over the Miami Heat at home. It wasn't as big of a margin as 1991, but it sure was a good one, especially because... Surprisingly enough, it was Isaac Okoro and Jetty Osmond who stepped up to the plate tonight for Cleveland and helped them get this win against the Heat. With Karis LeVert going down with an ankle and J.B. Bickerstaff sharing with me that it's a sprain, they don't know what's wrong with it, they're going to need guys like Osmond and Okoro to step up to the plate in order to guide Cleveland in a game against the Hawks, which Osmond said they're aware they know what the significance of it is because that's the team they lost to in the playing tournament. And Osmond said the Cavs really want to prove they belong in the Eastern Conference and they may have their shot tomorrow night against the Hawks. Hear about all this and more on this week's Locked On Cavs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. The Miami Heat have been struggling all season, but hit a low point, their most embarrassing effort all season, a 113-87 loss to the Cleveland Cavaliers. I'm David Ramil, the host of Locked On Heat. The Heat were without Jimmy Butler and Tyler Hero, their most consistent and capable scores, but there's really no excuse for what was Miami's most listless effort all year. Defensively, they tried to make up for their lack of size by using a zone defense, but the Cavs exploited early and often. Offensively, they simply couldn't find easy looks or knock down whatever open shots were available, only 19% from three-point range. That won't get it done. But what makes this loss so demoralizing is that these were the kind of games that they found a way to win last year. When key players went out due to injury, the team found a way to fight and claw their way to a victory, or at least a hard-fought loss. Instead, they gave up early tonight, showed little effort and less poise, and appeared disinterested. It's still early on. So they could turn things around, but the team is reaching a critical turning point where they'll no longer be a viable playoff team and will have to decide the future of the team, both this season and beyond. Will they find a spark soon or will they start looking to next year and potentially start looking to blow up the roster? Make sure to subscribe to Locked On Heat to find out. The Lakers are finally starting to put the pieces together, jumping out to a big lead early in a win over the Spurs on Sunday. Locked On Lakers goes over the latest news from an L.A. team still trying to figure things out. 
This is Andy Kamenetsky, co-host of the Locked on Lakers podcast, and the Lakers win 123-92 over the Spurs, their third win in a row despite not having LeBron James for four games. He's still dealing with that strain growing, but once again, Anthony Davis was an absolute monster. 30 points, 18 rebounds, three steals and a block in just 28 minutes, 11 of 17 from the floor, 6 of 6 from the line, 21 points for Austin Reeves with three assists, And off the bench, Russell Westbrook, 10 points, 10 assists. Thomas Bryant, 15 points, 9 rebounds. And the Lakers won all four quarters in this game, which I will go out on a limb without doing any research whatsoever. That's the first time this has happened this season. And the Lakers have been doing a really good job, as we've talked about on the show, this period where they have, other than Tuesday's game against Phoenix, a slate of very winnable games They've been doing a very nice job so far cashing in on this opportunity, trying to salvage the season. A lot more to get into, so make sure that you are subscribing to Locked on Lakers' YouTube channel and that you are making Locked on Lakers your first listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Nuggets and Mavs went down to the wire in a thriller in Dallas with Luka Doncic's potential game winner missing the mark at the buzzer. Locked on Mavs recaps the great finish. Mavs lose 97 and 98 despite a big game from Josh Green. Career night from Josh Green. Six threes off the bench. Just 22 points from Luka Doncic. It just wasn't enough for the Mavs. We have some questions around some uh, lineup choices, some decisions late. But Bones Highland was just too much for the Mavs tonight. But stop me if you've heard this before. They lost to a team missing their best players. Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray not playing. Mavs <sighs> lost. Let's talk about this more on Locked On Mavs. Coming up, the Kings outscore the Pistons at home. This is Locked On Game to Game NBA. Today's edition of Locked On Game to Game is brought to you by Prize Picks. It's a super simple way to play daily fantasy sports. What you need to do is you pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than Prize Picks projects them to, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. You're not competing against anyone else. You're just competing against those predictions. You can download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match for up to $100 with our promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100. Welcome back to Locked On Game to Game NBA. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you for making Locked On your first listen every weekday. The Warriors still had not won a game on the road all season going into last night, but that changed in Houston thanks to a big night from Clay Thompson. Locked On Warriors has the key to Golden State finally breaking that streak. Stop the presses, folks. The Golden State Warriors won a road game. I'm Cyrus Sotsis with your Locked On Warriors Locked On Now recap of the defending world champions winning their first Road game of the year, defeating the Houston Rockets at the Toyota Center, 127-120. Clay Thompson said the floodgates were opening soon, and boy, did they. Clay scored 20 first quarter points, finished the game with a season high, 41 points on 14 of 23 shooting from the field, including a staggering 10 of 13 from beyond the arc. His fellow Splash brother Stephen Curry had a night of his own, scoring 16 third quarter points en route to 33 points and 15 assists. That's one off his career high. The Warriors finish off a back-to-back on the road tomorrow in New Orleans. Follow the program on Instagram at LockedOnWarriors. The Suns turned a two-point halftime lead into a 21-point win over the Knicks on Sunday. And our Locked On Knicks host tells you what fell apart for New York on the road. The Knicks lose 116 to 95 to the Suns in a Sunday matinee. And honestly, it's probably about the result that could be expected. The Suns are a legitimate title contender. The Knicks are not. And it was a matinee game on the road in Phoenix. And it just was not a game that the Knicks probably should have expected to win. And as it turns out, they didn't. One silver lining for the Knicks and for Knicks fans. Quentin Grimes comes back, starts in this game, plays 32 minutes, scores 10 points, dishes eight assists to lead the team, and looked very comfortable in sort of a uh, distributor-ish role, which was great. So that's something to look forward to going forward, as long as he's healthy, I suppose. 
But that's pretty much it. Just a, a run-of-the-mill loss for the Knicks, unfortunately. We'll talk about it more on Locked on Knicks. Kyle Kuzma scored 28 points. Bradley Beal added 26 before heading off with injury in the Wizards' win over the Hornets yesterday. Both Locked on Wizards and Hornets look at the back-and-forth battle in Washington. What's good, everybody? It's your boy Brandon Scott again from Locked On Wizards. The Washington Wizards get their second win in a row, beating the Charlotte Hornets 106-102 at home. Now, leading the way was Kyle Kuzma contributing 28 points. Bradley Bill, the Supermax player for the Washington Wizards, contributed 26 points. But Christopher Singh is the third member of the Big Three. Did struggle tonight, scoring only 12 points. For the Charlotte Hornets, they were without their all-star point guard, LaMelo Ball. But leading the way for them was Kelly Obrey former Washington Wizards. Now, the Washington Wizards had this game a little closer than it should have been due to turnovers. Turnovers were terrible for this team. They committed 11 turnovers before the halftime, and they came back to bite them because, again, this was a game that should have been a blowout for the Washington Wizards. Now, going forward, they do play Miami twice on the road, which are very winnable games. Again, thank you for watching tonight, and have a good night. Even without their all-star LaMelo Ball, the Charlotte Hornets are proving they have enough talent to compete with good teams. They simply don't have enough toughness to win. I'm Doug Branson from the Locked On Hornets podcast. The Charlotte Hornets lose to the Washington Wizards. Final score, 106-102. It's their 11th loss in the past 12 games, but it feels like they've been in so many of these games, close games, including this one against Washington, where they take a lead into the fourth quarter but lose because they allow too many offensive rebounds and make too many mistakes on the defensive end of the floor. But also, they can't hit three-point shots right now. It was a big part of their offense and a big reason why they won last year. They can't do it. But right now, head coach Steve Clifford is pointing to the toughness, mentioning that they were one rebound away in that double overtime thriller loss to the Cleveland Cavaliers, a much better team. Uh, they'll, they'll have to look to find some of that toughness after a couple days rest in their next game. For more on the Charlotte Hornets, make sure you're following Locked On Hornets here on the Locked On Podcast Network. The Pistons scored plenty of points, but they also couldn't stop the Kings from closing in on 140 in Sacramento, and they took the loss. Locked on Pistons tells you what went wrong for the Detroit defense. This game had absolutely no defense being played by either team. Host of the Locked on Pistons podcast, Kook Hill here. The Detroit Pistons give up 137 points to the Sacramento Kings in their loss tonight. The Pistons really could have won this game and probably should have won this game. They had a lead late in this game, but over the last five minutes of the game, really just self-destructed by questionable coaching decisions, terrible communication defensively, and really bad turnovers on the offensive end by some of their main ball handlers by Bojan, one by Killian Hayes, and one by Jane Ivey. Can't feel too happy about any game where you give up 137 points, but the fact that they were able to stay into this game Without Cade Cunningham, without Sadiq Bey, without Isaiah Stewart, which I guess is a little bit of a silver lining, but man, 137 points, man. That's tough. There are so many di- different miscommunications on the defensive end, just just un- inexcusable things happening on the defensive end. They have to get that cleaned up. Marvin Bagley, by the way, I want to give him credit because he fought through some hostile stuff from the Sacramento Kings and still ended up with 15 points. Happy for him, but Piss has got to play some defense. That's all for today on Locked On Game to Game NBA. Thank you so much for making Locked On your first listen every weekday. Make sure that you subscribe to Locked On NBA and your team's Locked On podcast on YouTube and wherever else you get your podcasts from. I'm Kainani Stevens. This has been Locked On Game to Game.